Hey everyone, in the previous video we built a multi-tenant application where each tenant has his own custom domain and his own database. In this video I'm going to show you how to configure sessions in a way to prevent leaking session data between tenants. So here we have our two tenants. One is served on the laravel.web domain and the other is served on the paravel.web domain. We are going to log in the laravel tenant. And we can see here that our user is called Muhammad, the, the email is muhammad.mail.com and the user ID is equal to 1. If we open Chrome DevTools under the application tab and head to the cookies section, we can see the cookie session in place. And you can also see that the cookie domain is laravel.web. So this cookie belongs to the Laravel tenant. If we go to the Paravel tenant and refresh, no logged in user yet. But if we go to laravel.web and change the session domain to paravel.web instead of laravel.web and we go to paravel.web and refresh, now paravel thinks that we are logged in. And you can see that this is a completely different user. The username is zane and the email address is zane at mail.com. However, the ID of the user is also one. So by manipulating the cookie domain, we were able to log ourselves in another tenant or impersonate a different user. And this happened because we are using the file session store, which is the store selected by default in a Laravel application, where we store all the session data in one place. So when the Laravel application finds a session with this specific ID and it finds an attached user to this session with ID equal one, it will grab that user from the database no matter which tenant or which domain we are using. A user can switch the domain of the session cookie and be able to log himself in or impersonate another user in another tenant if the user has his same user ID. There are several ways to deal with this problem, but in this video I'm going to show you two ways. The first approach is to store the session data separately. So since we are using the file session store, we can go to session.php configuration file and check here. That's where all the sessions are stored. What we are going to do is go to our tenant model where we configure the tenant configuration and update the configuration to store each tenant's sessions in a different place. So instead of storing all the sessions in a storage framework sessions, we are going to store the, the sessions of each tenant in a separate directory. Now we are going to create a separate directory for each of our tenants. Now let's go back and see if we can impersonate users like we did before. So here we have the Laravel tenant, not, no user logged in, and the Paravel tenant, no user logged in. We are logged in in the Laravel tenant, change the session domain, and see if we can be logged in in the Paravel tenant. And if we refresh, we are not logged in. That's because Laravel is trying to find the session ID that belongs to tenant1 in the tenant2 sessions directory. Going back to the session.php configuration file, we can see the supported session drivers. And here we learned how to deal with this problem using the file session driver. And if you use the database session driver, you won't have this problem because already each tenant has a separate database. So the session data will be stored in separate databases. However, if you choose the APC store, memcached, Redis, DynamoDB, you will have to find a way to store each tenant data in a separate connection. And of course, you cannot use the cookie session store because as we saw, like users can manipulate this cookie. Another approach that will help you not bother about which tenant store are you using is using a middleware to make sessions tenant aware. So let's head to the terminal and create a middleware. Now we go to the HTTP kernel file and register our middleware in the web middleware group. So let's take a look at what we can do in this middleware. First, we'll check if we have a tenant ID stored in our session and if not, we are going to add it.
Next, we will check if the tenant ID stored in the session doesn't match the current tenant ID that's using the application. And if so, we are going to abort the request. Now let's see if our middleware works. We are going to log in. And here we have the user as Muhammad with ID one, and then we'll change the session domain, go to paravel.com, refresh. And now because the tenant ID stored in the session doesn't match the current tenant, we get the 401 response. Now on each request, the middleware will ensure that the past session ID belongs to the current tenant. And I personally prefer this approach because I won't have to worry about which session store I am using at the moment. And I can switch between session stores without having to worry about session leakage. But let me know what you think. Which approach do you think is better? And I hope you find this video useful. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all the questions. Thank you and have a great day.